Hey everyone, today we're checking out a new game changer for AI video, namely character referencing. This is the first time that I've seen it implemented and it's coming from a surprising place. We're gonna dive in and I'll show you some of the best and worst case scenarios, plus some tips and tricks that I picked up along the way and how you can use it today for free. Okay, let's dive in. So currently there are three different workflows for AI video. There is text to video in which we input text and then have the video model generate something based off of that text. Image to video where we provide a static image and a prompt and then the model attempts to bring it to life. And video to video which restylizes something that has already been shot. All three do have their strengths and weaknesses, although I think it's generally considered that text to video is the weakest of the three. Text to video is probably the most slot machine of the three. That's mostly due to the fact that it's very hard to get consistent results out of it. And it is kind of difficult to control. Although again, it does have its benefits, namely when it does hit, I mean, you really can't beat it in terms of dynamic and smooth motion. Now, of course, one of the biggest problems with text to video is the fact that you really can't get consistent characters out of it unless you are prompting for extremely bland archetypes. Like I'm talking about like a bald hitman wearing a black suit, a la Agent 47 from Hitman, or something like, you know, a woman with red hair wearing a black dress. And even then it could be touch and go. So it actually really surprised me when I found out that Vidu dropped character referencing into their text to video model, uh, especially surprising to me because I didn't actually realize that Vidu released. Vidu is a video model that was announced kind of back when OpenAI kept flexing Sora all over the place. They released a video demo and then in all honesty kind of went a little bit quiet, but yeah, they've resurfaced now and they've got one killer feature. Namely, the ability to upload a reference image of a character and then output a text to video of that character. Let's take a look at a quick example that I cribbed together. This one is kind of in that, you know, PI detective noir thing, uh, kind of reminiscent of Tuesday, the video to video experiment that I did kind of recently. So I used these two mid journey characters. So no audio on this. I'm just running it as straight video. Um, our detective may look a little bit off from our reference image. I'll talk about that in a little bit. But yeah, overall for text to video, I mean, that's pretty good. And again, while our characters may have shifted ever so slightly, definitely stay tuned because I've got something that's pretty mind blowing coming up. So in general, Vidu does more or less the normal stuff. You can drop a reference image in here. So we're gonna take our white haired uh, femme fatale. And, you know, obviously you can put in any kind of text that you want. You can use the image either as the first frame, starting frame, or you can use it as a character reference. You also have the option to generate in durations of either four or eight seconds, which I know that 10 seconds has kind of become the de facto norm. So this definitely does fall a little short in that category. Now, granted, last video, I asked you all if you thought 10 seconds was enough, and most of you seem to think that it was, and even then you were only taking parts of that output, so 10 seconds was more than enough. That said, generating it eight seconds, for some reason, felt a little bit on the cramped side to me. Now, one thing that I do like about video is the fact that when you prompt, its initial output is at 688 by 384 at 16 frames a second. So, you know, kind of a very unusable low res preview, but at least that gives you an idea of what the output is going to to look like, and then you can, you know, decide to upscale it to HD from there. I do have a bone to pick on that, but we'll discuss that in a little bit. In the meantime, let's take a look at some examples, beginning with this mid journey generated like unit of a warrior who is definitely not a world famous football player. So taking that image and using it as a character reference, along with the prompt cinematic atmosphere of a warrior in a castle, in a giant throne room, he is laughing, yields us this guy who I will admit is, you know, not David Beckham as well. But what's interesting about this is that every time you use this character reference, you will consistently get this not version of David Beckham. Uh, here we have him getting angry and hulking out and he is still our not David Beckham. Not a great version here. And this is the low res version. You can see I didn't upscale it, but yeah, you can definitely see that it is still consistently that character continuing to experiment and I guess keeping on with the footy theme I grabbed the image of our gal Daniela van den Ankh, the Dutch footballer dressed as a pirate uh, and tried using that as a character reference now this is where some interesting stuff ended up happening the results were not great again this is the low res version um, yeah but the color saturation looks completely off in this I think that if you're referencing a character that is illustrated it's not going to work out so well 
but things did get interesting when I took a photographic character reference of her from another video that we did. I think this might have been done in Mid Journey uh, and tried running this as a character reference. And we ended up with this version of Pirate Daniela who, uh, yeah, there is definitely some Johnny Depp in here. I also love the fact that a dagger just magically appears in her hand. I think we can safely say that there are many other sailors on that boat wearing an eye patch. And again, although she does very much come out as Daniela Depp, uh, the fact is that she will consistently come out as Daniela Depp. Although admittedly looking at her now, she kind of really does come off as like the love child of Jack Sparrow and Elizabeth Swan, which is definitely a much more interesting movie than Dead Man's Chest. So initially I thought that Vidyu was taking the character image reference and kind of creating a secret text prompt behind the scenes, a bit like maybe like Mid Journey's Describe and injecting that into the text prompt. At least that's what I was thinking until I tried referencing myself and ended up with this. So yeah, this is me driving a sports car somewhere down the Amalfi Coast. It did make me a little younger. Thank you for that video. Oh, and then it did do like that weird cut where it showed the car that I was driving. But I mean, overall, that's pretty remarkable for a one shot image. Very repeatable as well. This is a shot of me investigating a crime in a crime alley. Uh, another shot of me in crime alley. Why do people keep going into crime alley? Stay out of crime alley. Nothing good is going to happen there. Here's me doing the Tom Cruise run away from a bunch of explosions. You know, something that happens to me on the daily. Uh, a little bit softer in general, but, you know, I mean, at least it totally nailed the runner's physique that I totally do not have. I'm getting winded just looking at AI me. We're going to look at how to clean this up in just a minute. But first, one last fake me. Finally, here is AI me cutting it up on the dance floor with a bunch of supermodels. Yeah, AI me gets to have all the fun. He drives up and down the Amalfi Coast in a sports car and goes and hangs out on a dance floor with a bunch of supermodels. Real me just sits here and plays with AI tools all day long. So, you know, at least one of us is having fun. So overall, I do think that this is a pretty cool step forward. Is it perfect? It is definitely not. In fact, even after a video upscale, I do find myself needing to upscale it one more step in Topaz. The differences are subtle, but I do think noticeable. This is uh, not David Beckham standing in a throne room. This is the video upscale and then running a topaz upscale on it the settings here are on the iris setting uh we're changing it from 24 frames to 2997 uh let's add just a one step of noise to it why not um and yeah hitting export which admittedly is very subtle but it does act very much as like that cherry on top now where i do think that the video upscaler is really going to come into its own is when its creative upscaler is working. It's obviously here, it's still under development. So what I think this will end up looking a bit like is like Kriya's creative video upscaler. And to my knowledge, Kriya is the only one that is doing this. Um, so yeah, this is the initial video upscale, uh, just the standard HD upscale. And then when you run it through Kriya's um, creative upscaler, yeah, the differences are very, very noticeable. Admittedly, it doesn't fully work miracles. Like again, here is that shot of sort of me running away from explosions as Tom Cruise. Um, and then the Korea upscaler gives us this, which yeah, it, it, it doesn't really retain the characteristics of my face, but it definitely cleans the clip up a pretty considerable amount. I mean, it's really noticeable with not David Beckham hulking out here. Um, and as we turn on the Korea upscaler, I mean, the amount of detail that we get in the toga and in the background is, is pretty impressive. Now, it does not fix things like, you know, Vidyu has some morphing problems going on up here. You can see that definitely as he kind of like raises his arm forward. But overall, I'd say that the Vidyu model is, I mean, it's okay. It's pretty much on par with all of the other, you know, uh, video generators right now. Uh, for an example of image to video, this is an image uh, that Styles Morales put together and then running it through video as just a straight image to video. We end up with this, which looks pretty good. I mean, very, all the characters stay consistent. Nobody ends up sprouting an extra arm or like a fourth eyeball. Astro AI art gives us this shot from Flux One Pro into uh, video. And yeah, I mean, it, it looks really pretty decent. Again, we do have some problems with the hands as they kind of come up, but you know, facial animation looks really good. So ultimately, is video a cling, luma, or runway killer? No, it's not. But then again, I don't do those kinds of statements anyhow. 
That said, it does have this really cool feature of character referencing. And for right now, at least, that makes it very unique. So video is free, or at least, you know, free trial. I mean, you guys know how this goes. Um, you get 80 credits a month, which is actually kind of a pretty decent amount, and you can upscale. I jumped up to the standard plan uh, for this video. The bone that I have to pick is that every generation is four credits and then an upscale is another four credits. So really it's eight credits. Not a huge fan of that. Would rather see that in being like a two, four ratio. That said, in my opinion for now, I don't think that video should be used as your primary video generator. But I mean, at the at $7.99 a month, I do think it makes a pretty decent secondary uh, video generator, mostly because of that character reference feature. I also think that this is one to keep an eye on given that they have creative upscale coming. Again, outside of Korea, I have not seen anyone else doing this. And I mean, honestly, it's a pretty cool feature. So yeah, go give video a shot. 80 credits for free. Uh, let me know what you think down in the comments. In the meantime, I thank you for watching. My name is Tim.